Induction Motor Construction In our daily lives, we are familiar with the devices like fan, fridge, washing machine, dishwasher, clothes dryer, and the little pump that circulates water in the fish tank to stop the water turning green and the fish going belly up. Have we ever thought what is inside these devices which perform their particular task? The answer is induction motor. Now, let us study the construction of the induction motor in detail. The main part of the induction motor is stator. To deeply understand the induction motor, we have to know about subparts of the stator. The outermost part of the stator is frame. The purpose of the frame is to provide mechanical protection and support for the windings. The next subpart of the stator is insulated electrical windings. These electrical windings consist of copper wire insulated with varnish. These are fitted into insulated slotted laminations which are made from high grade alloy steel to reduce the effect of eddy currents. Another main part of the induction motor is rotor. Rotor is the rotating part of the motor. Depending on the rotor structure, there are two types of rotors, squirrel cage rotor and slip ring rotor. Now, let's understand the construction of squirrel cage rotor. It consists of a cylindrical laminated core with parallel slots for carrying the conductors, which are heavy bars of copper or aluminium. Thick copper bars are placed on each slot, and the metal rings or end rings short these bars, which will be formed on both the sides. These bars are arranged in a squirrel cage arrangement. If the iron is removed, then it resembles as a cage-like structure for the rodents. That's why it is named as squirrel cage rotor. The slots are not always parallel to shaft, but twisted through an angle called skew angle. Now, let us discuss about the slip ring rotor. In slip ring rotor, one set of windings is brought out and connected to three insulated slip rings mounted on the shaft with brushes resting on them. The other parts of the induction motor are shaft and bearing. Shaft is placed inside the rotor. So, when rotor rotates, then actually shaft rotates. Rotor is mounted on bearings to reduce friction on both the sides. Usually, ball and roller bearings are used to suit heavy duty, trouble-free running and enhanced service life. The next part of the induction motor is fan. Light aluminium fans are used to for adequate circulation of cooling air, securely keyed onto the rotor shaft. Terminal box is used for holding stator windings and rotor windings. Two end covers with suitable bearings provide support for the rotor assembly.